I go to a special place when I want to meet with you. I appoint a special time. I get reverential tones when I speak to you. I certainly want to come to ask you for help. But you wait there till I come to ask you for help. How have you thought about it? Sometimes the son comes to the age when he shuts up the door. He shuts the door and goes off. Once I was invited to a home in Morotua. I did not know what I was in for. When I went there, father and mother were so glad. They said, Doctor, you came at such, on the right day at the right time. We have been uh, writing to you to get you down. It is amazing that you came at this hour on this day. So I really felt I must have got a word of knowledge that I went there at that time. Why? He said, because our son is not at home and we knew if, you, if, if, if he, if he, if he if we wanted you to come when he's not there. I said, why? Let us show you his room. They had made a spare key somehow and opened the door and showed me his domain. It wasn't too bad. There's a large, large, uh, uh, a large chap who was dressed in black. Then they, I did not know who he was. They said, that's Michael Jackson. I was so innocent, you know. After that, I, I knew him. So there were a lot of uh, these chaps with guitars and uh, uh, huge, ho all the walls were pasted. And they said, are you a doctor? This, uh, his behavior has changed. He's all the time in this room. And I, we hear all kinds of sounds. See his hi-fi system, blah, 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 blah. That they were very keen that I pray in the room and quickly exit before he comes. Which I did. So how is God to you? So that uh, son comes to age and tells, tells the father, get off my back. I could never tell that to my father. He, I'm sure many of you never said that. How about God? Our Father, who art in heaven. When we call him our Father, he is going to get involved with us. And Jesus called him his Father. That took Jesus where? That took Jesus where? To the cross. What is the cross for you? That you call God your Father. Jesus called him Father. And Hebrews says, Jesus said, I come to do your will, O God, and my body is prepared for you to use it as you please. Hebrews 10.5 Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Jesus is speaking before he was incarnated. Jesus was God. He was in the beginning with God. He was God, but he thought it not to grasp that equality. Equality. He let go that deity and he emptied himself. Greek word is kenosis. Will you say he emptied himself? He took the form of a man and he further degraded himself to the death on the cross. Therefore, to him is given a name above every name. Now he has died and he has risen again. Praise the Lord. To him is given a name above every name. So that when we speak in the name of Jesus, he comes, Jesus Christ himself comes, and he attends on the need. I can't attend myself. Two ways to know him. Theoretically, proving his crucifixion, proving his resurrection, that he is a historical figure. But there is a pragmatic way to know him. Breathe that holy name in prayer. Pray the name of Jesus. I did not believe him. I was reading about him. I was reading the Bible. John chapter 8. To argue against the existence of Jesus Christ. Existence of God. With, with the person who brought me to the Lord. I was playing chess. Only reason I read the Bible is. He beat me at chess. I had topped the batch all I learned in the A-level science. And I topped the batch in all my exams in the medical faculty. But this chap 
beat me at chess. So I respected not his Christianity, I respected his brains. Because he played chess better than I did. Oh, I won one, he won one. It went on like that. Then I came to John chapter 8. There Jesus speaks to the woman caught in the act of adultery and to people who brought her to be stoned. And he says, he that hath no sin cast the first stone. When he said that, I had the first impression of Jesus being living. Not like last night when he visited my room. I found this out of the story, when Jesus said, when the story I read for the first time in my life, John chapter 8, and Jesus speaks to the crowd who's waiting to store thrones at this woman, caught in the act of adultery. For adultery, the punishment was capital punishment. Two chaps, two, a couple has been put to death in Mali, in Africa, Mali. Did you read that? Done to death. A couple that married woman or married man in adultery where Taliban is getting hold of Mali, put to death. That was the punishment. Jesus said, he that hath no sin, cast the first stone. So literally, Jesus came between the woman and the stone. Say it me, Jesus came between the woman and the stones. And they grit their teeth, hated him. Nobody converted. Put the stones down. If they could have, they would have stoned him. But they put the stones down and went away. And Jesus spoke to the woman and said, Have they all gone? Go, I condemn thee not. Go and sin no more. Jesus would have been very bold, isn't it? To face a mob of wicked men so enraged against him. They trapped a woman to trap him theologically and brought her. My suggestion is one of them went and adulterated with her fornicated and dragged her. Others went and caught and dragged her only, not the man. It's only the woman who would be stoned to death, not the man. It would be only the woman who would be stoned to death, not the man. And they dragged her, a pitiful rat in a trap, to trap Jesus Christ, theologically. But Jesus Christ is God incarnate. Say it me, Jesus Christ is God incarnate. He's Wisdom incarnate. His wisdom is greater than Solomon. And he says, He that hath no sin, cast the first stone. They grind their teeth, put the stone down. I'm sure they ground their heel on the ground. Turn their back. Unconverted, they went away. But Jesus spoke to the woman. And woman turned to Christ. I read this story. Suddenly, I found Jesus looking at me out of the pages of this old Bible and saying, his look said, you are like that. So competitive, so argumentative, so quick on the reparty. I can start a debate on nothing. And I saw myself for the first time. Up to that time, my parents thought so well of me. My teachers thought so well of me. My approval was my studying. I studied to be approved. But that day, Christ looked at me and made me to understand myself. A few days later, I came to Christ, accepted him into my heart, and I began to call him Father. I did not know to pray. I would only pray before exams, a little short prayer. But I understood God became my father. When God became father to you, how was the change? Because God is our father now. How is our life? Our father, which art in heaven. Second thing the Lord brings from this prayer is that heaven is real. Will you say heaven is real? And heaven rules over the affairs of men. To these disciples who did not know much about heaven, they were rough. Most of them were rough fishermen. They were not interested in heaven. They were interested in fish in the sea. Soon after Jesus' death 
and uh, and and they didn't they hadn't accepted his resurrection yet they were back in the sea in their fisherman's garb peter was wearing next to nothing when christ came uh, he was in that old <coughs> it wasn't a calvin klein it, uh, big part he he was so ashamed and christ came and he had hardly anything no clothes to cover himself he was in his undergarments he jumped into the sea so that the water could be the garment so says john 21 one was a tax gatherer one was judas one was simon the zealot he had taken arms against the roman government they didn't care much about heaven but jesus taught them our father which art in heaven and jesus taught them hallowed be thy name once you name him in his name you have become holy what does it mean in his name you belong to him let me read from Deuteronomy 7 what holy means. Because we think holy is don't drink, don't smoke, no ganja, no heroin. We think holy is no, 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 no. But holy is a positive consecration. This is what God thinks is holy. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. You are a holy people to the Lord your God. Lord your God has chosen you. That makes us holy. Little fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure. Will you say it me? Father's good pleasure. Fa will you say again? Father's good pleasure. Our father's good pleasure gets into us. My pleasure becomes holy. All my fountains get cleansed. They become holy. My appetite changes. He has chosen me. F little flock, fear not. Luke 12, 32. It is your father's good pleasure. Will you touch your tummy? Father's good pleasure. Is it there in your tummy? Father's good pleasure. You know when you fast, you feel like fasting more. Similarly when you eat, you feel like eating more. This afternoon at, f at about 4 o'clock, behind our house, I began to hear sounds. It was not a sound of war. It was not a sound of brawl. It was uh, not a sound of husband scolding a wife, which we frequently hear from the back, rear of our house. It was a sound of men fairly advanced in intoxication trying to sing. Now some of you say, Uncle Lalit, that's what you do every day in the choir. And I said, they're not singing too well, but they are so advanced in drunkenness they were trying to sing. But thank God for Jesus, our pleasures have become holy. Ephesians 5.19 says, be drunk only with the Holy Spirit. We are no more intoxicated with the salary we earn. Amen. We are no more intoxicated with the money we handle. We are no more intoxicated with the house in which we live. Are you? We are no more intoxicated by the vehicle in which we travel. These are lesser intoxications. We have decided our pleasure is not in these things. Our pleasure is in our Father's good pleasure. Are you listening? Does this make sense? My pleasure has changed. Has your pleasure changed? My pleasure has changed. Has your pleasure changed? You know, academics is tremendous pleasure. Academics is tremendous pleasure. You don't need anybody to live you only need more academic thought. It is, I tell you, it's a high intoxicant. You don't need anybody. You can live with your books. You don't need anybody. You can go on thinking and thinking and thinking, reading and reading and reading, postulating and thinking. You can be in such a nice world. You don't need human beings. That's what academics does. Thank God for Jesus. It's high intoxication. More theories, more thought. Yeah. Discovering things that others haven't discovered. Advanced in the frontiers of knowledge in that little field that you have chosen, which has given you permanent head damage, PhD. Yeah, it damages you. 
is that fine thing nobody else knows about it that gives a tremendous thrill brothers and sisters i know it because i have been there but thank god for jesus i'm sure you have had your own thrills you have had your own pleasures but our father has come and we call him our father and jesus said it is my pleasure to do your will 